what's the history of the metaverse? Today, the metaverse is used to describe this more immersive internet where we use augmented and virtual reality to make this whole experience more immersive. Where we can project things into our room using augmented reality, where we can walk into environments using our avatars. The thing is that this is not new. So I want to look back at some of the key historic milestones that have led to where we are today. It all started back in 1838, when scientist Sir Charles Wheatstone outlined the concept of binocular vision, where you combine two images, one for each eye, to make a single 3D image. And this led to the development of stereoscopes, where you use those two images to create this illusion of depth. The same concepts are used today in modern VR headsets. Now we jump to 1935, when American science fiction writer Stanley Weinbaum published Pygmalion Spectacles, in which the main character explores the fictional world using a pair of goggles. So this is when the idea started. In 1956, Morton Heiling created the first VR machine, combining a 3D video with audio, smells and vibrating chairs to immerse the viewer in a movie. Heilig also went on to patent the first head-mounted display combining stereoscopic 3D images with stereo sound. And this happened in 1960. Between 1960s and 1970s, we also saw the first use of augmented reality in the military, in the army, with headsets for pilots, for example. In the 1970s, MIT created Aspen Movie Map, which is a computer-generated tour of the streets of Aspen. And this, I guess, is the first time we could use VR to transport users to another place. In 1982, the term metaverse was first used in Neil Stevenson's novel Snow Crash, where it was a place where people went to escape the jeery totalitarian reality of the real world they live in. In the early 1990s, we saw VR arcade machines like the Sega VR1 motion simulators, and they were used in lots of arcades. In 1998, Sports Vision broadcast the first live NFL game with a yellow yard maker. So the idea of overlaying graphics onto our TV screens, which, which very quickly uh, spread to other sports broadcasting. In 2010, 18-year-old Palmer Lucky created the prototype for the Oculus Rift VR headset that had a 90-degree field of vision and used computer processing power, which really revolutionized the, the headset market and reignited interest in VR. In 2011, we saw the release of the book Ready Player One, which then became a movie directed by Steven Spielberg, which again gives us this idea of the metaverse being this completely immersive world that we enter to escape from reality. In 2014, Facebook then acquired Oculus VR for around $2 billion. Also in 2014, Sony and Samsung announced they were creating their own VR headsets. And Google released its first cardboard device, a low-cost cardboard VR viewer where you stick your phone in and it gives you the VR experience, as well as Google Glass was released, the AR glasses from Google. In 2016, Microsoft released its HoloLens headset, which gave us mixed reality. So we could create a holographic image in front of us that we could then put into the real world and manipulate. Also, 2016 saw the release of Pokemon Go, which means everyone was running around with their smartphones trying to find the little Pokemons in the real world. And IKEA released the Place app, which was uh, the first innovative way of using augmented reality where you can place furniture into your house and see what it looks like. 
In 2020, we saw the introduction of LiDAR in iPhones and iPads, which meant it can detect depth much better and augmented reality will become more realistic. In 2021, Facebook changed its name to Meta, which signaled its focus on the metaverse. HTC launched the Vive Flow, which is a, a, a really portable virtual reality headset that looks like sunglasses. And Ray-Ban, again in collaboration with Facebook or Meta, created their stories smart glasses. And I believe we'll see more of these immersive interfaces appearing. For example, Apple is working on headsets that could potentially replace our smartphones as the interface into the metaverse in the future. So watch this space. A lot of hap is happening at the moment. If you want to stay up to date, subscribe to my channel or check out my book, Extended Reality in Practice, where I go into a lot more detail on all of these topics.